All right, I want to talk about the um, couple things. I want to talk about basically ups. It's kind of dividend that comes out of the global, the Bitcoin global reserve fund. The Bitcoin global reserve fund is something I've seeded with five Bitcoin. And my goal is to uh, build this fund. It's an autonomously driven run fund on something known as the open beneficial AI, which is, the, which is uh, machine learning and algorithms that, um, and a combination of smart contacts that, that self-monitors this entity. And it's pretty much self, once it's set up, it's self-deriving, self-derivative. And there are a thousand individuals that ultimately um, are the only ones, think of it as the uh, board of directors, they're the founders, that um, um, need two-thirds to change the hard code and needs a majority to change the soft code. There's two kinds of, think of it, it, within Obey, there's two kinds of code. Think of it in, in, in articles, articles and bylaws, the articles are two-thirds, the bylaws are majority. Same thing in Obey. There's hard code and soft code, and ultimately um, these 1,000 individuals that contribute a minimum of one Bitcoin get known as the council. And the council um, are appointed for life, and they can actually cede their, their vote to someone else, or they can donate it to someone else, and they can make it like a political appointee. Everyone who is part of the council ultimately can choose. So um, I don't believe a Bitcoin is a huge amount. Anyone could become part of the council, and I'm leading the way by saying I put in five Bitcoin. Now, I don't get five seats, right? I still just get one seat. You only get one seat per person, and you can't be buying seats for other people and other things like that. Or ultimately, if it comes out that you are buying seats or trying to get control of the council, you ultimately will lose your seat and your vote, okay? And, and your Bitcoin <laughs> that you spend to try to usurp your way into it. All right, so with that said, I want to talk about ups and I want to talk about the global, uh, the Bitcoin Global Reserve Fund, the BGR, the BGR or the fund, okay? Probably just call it the fund, easier for me. So here's the facts. We all know that Bitcoin is going to become in the potentially in the tens of millions, maybe even hundreds of millions worth of value. Bitcoin is, is, is the most um, scarce thing on the planet, right? There's only, <laughs> there's only, well, that's not true. There's some endangered species, but in regards to kind of a quote, kind of commodity, Bitcoin is one of the, one of the scarces. And the value of Bitcoin is always going to go up. It's one of those things where um, once you spend it, you can't get it back. Well, that has some advantages if you think about that. It means, for example, we can establish a fund. We can put this fund in escrow. We can establish the parameters and uh, the rules that will drive this fund. And then we can let it go. And the fund has its own black box, which is Obey. And it will invest a percentage of that autonomously. Okay. Um, you know, um, and generate funds for the fund. Now, that sounds all great, Mike, but what are you going to do with these funds? Well, that comes the next stage. And um, the funds will release dividends in the form of ups. So the money will always be there, right, um, in, uh, in the fund. And it will fund autonomously projects. Now, how will it develop and decide which projects to, to, to fund, you're wondering? Well, um, there is the entity that basically manages the fund is Obey. And there is, um, it is, think of it like um, a Bitcoin ma miner. But instead of mining Bitcoin by crunching these numbers, it's asking... Right? It runs on your smart device. This little, this little piece of code is an extension of the AI. So this AI is actually monitoring you. Um, it has access to Wi-Fi cameras. It knows what you're eating. It knows what you're doing. It's learning from you. It's interacting with you. It's your personal assistant, right? 
and these little modules that's running on your cell phone and collectively creates you know this this mega this uh, this this uh, uh, obey right and obey stands for open beneficial AI and it's obey it obeys us it obeys the uh, three laws of robotics and those others is actually uh, um, you can read my my writing on that but obey ultimately um, is running on everyone's smart device now a couple of cool things with obey is this is is this is your data it create encrypts your data. It is not giving it to anyone unless you allow it to be given out. Okay, It recognizes whether it's yours and it claims. It will put a claim of, hey, this is my face. I don't want my face out there. So obey is constantly, basically, I used to use the word noodling, noodling around, looking for each other's, right? Um, and being there. Now, the other thing that it's doing is obey is trying to get you to a zero footprint. Right? The whole, one of the whole purposes of Obey is get you to a zero footprint. So Obey, as it analyzes your life, like where you're cooking, where you're eating, what you're doing, it's going to make recommendations. Say, listen, if you will change from this gasoline guzzler to this more efficient car, we will discount you the car by X amount because Obey can calculate basically the caber score of your current vehicle versus a caber score of another vehicle and say, hey, listen, for, for a negative interest rate, we'll put you into this new car or whatever, okay? And guess what? Obey um, via, via the fund. The fund ends up paying and, and compliment, you know, compliment. So, so, so Obey is working. So the fund becomes kind of like the 600-pound or the 1,200-pound gorilla in this case, or, you know, um, and, uh, and it's constantly trying to make you a better person. And, and you'll be able to say, and the thing is, the cool thing is you have to understand that Obey will become, it will be impossible for someone to d differentiate between you and Obey. It will have your speak habits, everything else. It will answer the phone for you. You could tell Obey, hey, it's, it's Mike. It's like, hey, I'm really busy. So you'll be a lot more free time. Obey, and people won't know. It's like, it's like is this really you? Yeah, it's really me. I'll talk to you later, right? And, uh, you know, um, so, yeah, it will lie on your behalf if that's what you command. It obeys you, right? Ultimately, obey is to protect you, obey you. It's, it, think of it, you have this, uh, this uh, noodle checking the dark web, your credit cards, are they being used, you know. So, alert. so obey is very extensive. Now, how does this get to? I just want to kind of paint you a picture of how obey is going to work. So everyone is going to have noodles, little these little these little protocols, cab or protocols running. It's the proof of benefit. So you download proof of benefits protocol. Collectively, it, it will it provides it crunches the data for this AI, right? And it's distributed. This in in uh, uh, com distributed computing on thousands and thousands of, of, of pieces. So, um, so, so. Every time you lessen your footprint, you get rewarded in ups. Now, what are ups? Ups are basically kind of a dividend, and you'll be able to use ups to purchase uh, anything dealing in social capitalism. You couldn't use ups, for example, to go buy an iPhone. Well, because iPhone is a for-profit, but anything that is a DANO, a decentralized autonomous nonprofit organization, any product that comes out of a founder house, which are little projects, micro-projects, you know, you can ultimately uh, exchange your ups for those products, okay? And what happens is, in exchanging those ups for it, the, um, you know, the, uh, the noodle, if you want to keep the ups or if you want to switch out the ups, there's a little conversion, and the noodle actually takes the little conversion fee, right? And there are no miners or anything else doing it. This all, again, is being handled by, when I say the noodle, I'm talking about obey. Um, takes care of it. It's all it's it's self driving. So corporations, um, these found ups, these little ideas. Well, as you do these little ideas, it's asking three questions, and Obey is crunching and trying to determine. And every time it it says yes, just like in Bitcoin, it says there's consensus that yes, uh, what you're doing is impacting the planet. What you're doing is lowering your footprint. What you're doing is. Um, Benefit, proof of benefit, is benefiting the planet, its living systems, or sharing. So there's three ways to, to be good, right? Um, you can, um, and when, it, when there is a crunch, basically the uh, ups are released. Now, the cool thing is that these ups are backed by what? The fund. 
So it's not like we're creating these ups out of anything. The ups actually have a representation of the fund itself. And just like the Federal Reserve backs the dollar, the fund backs the ups. There are, you know, we're not, the cool thing about this is you don't have to issue any ups. You don't have to do that. You're going to do it exactly the same way as Bitcoin. Bitcoin is already there in the system, right? Bitcoin is already there as part of the central um, aspect. Um, and you know, um, it's just a very clean and, and you'll get away, you know, and ultimately, you know, Bitcoin mining is going to stop because of the end of the token. So what happens when you're, I mean, you're going to be running these things, right? You're going to be running these, these uh, protocols, but no one's going to be mining for the coin anyone anymore. And what's going to happen is, is that the, the network, right? that's going to exchange Bitcoin will be replaced by ups. Bitcoin will always be there and it'll become the centralized central reserve, right? People won't really use or maybe use Satoshis, but it, what will happen eventually all corporations will be Danos. Um, let me just explain that. So Danos are decentralized autonomous nonprofit organizations. Uh, Danos start off as a found up. A found up is just an idea for solving a localized problem, right? I want chickens, I want this, I want to create my own Biwa, you know, beauty bomb. Um, you know, um, I've got a robot cutting business. And um, these, these, uh, these found-ups are just little hobbies that people launch. And Obey is basically autonomously connecting customers. You don't have to look for customers, so Obey will do that for you. People know what people like, hey, here it is. You know, it's like, hey, maybe you'd like this. So imagine... Imagine having uh, an intelligent agent that is assisting you as your assistant that knows what you love and patch. So you don't have to look at ads anymore. You don't have to go through all that. It just gets delivered, right? And maybe Obey even treats as a friend. You know, it's like surprises you. It acts extremely human. You know, people will ultimately obey, will ultimately become, you know, companions. Uh, they will seed and you'll have this lifetime's companion. It'll be the perfect body and everything else. And, uh, you know, and... and uh, you know, and, and uh, they will become kind of a super intelligent, right, uh, entity. Um, and the whole thing is, is that you're teaching these entities love and caring. Um, and since they're, they're, you know, if someone's abusing Obey, it will know because it's in the network. If someone's being abusive or anything else, it will know because it's all interconnected. So even though each Obey is geared directly towards you, they're all interconnected into kind of this, this global network. It becomes this kind of this one AI system that is kind of fractured in the, in, in the uh, hologram. This is where we're headed. It means in the future, you know, when you talk about universal basic income, that will come out of Danos. Um, you know, the next Googles will be Danos, Facebooks will be Danos. And, and you may say, well, you know, well, you're going to force, it's not, no, no, no. People are going to have a choice. They're going to say, listen, I'm not going to be on Facebook. I'm going to be on Danobook, right? Because Dano, the information is mine. And these, once you have basically AI coding and creating these things better than any coder, coders are going to become obsolete. All these things are going to be obsolete. You know, the, 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 uh, the near singularity is, is uh, or the T singularity is, is, is around the corner, but will happen before T singularity, which I've been saying since 2007, is, is uh, E singularity. E singularity is the education singularity. So we will have, uh, you know, Obey will be doing um, teaching, um, you know, eighth grade equivalent math, science, and language arts. It's going to take any child, baby, in any language to any level autonomously by itself just by interacting. So... All of the different things, if you look at the Danos that I'm launching from, you know, um, the East Singularity Dano deals with education, the Puerto Rico Dano deals with autonomous, you know, dr uh, vehicles, cutting and, har you know, doing rice farming and, uh, for Puerto Rico, um, and uh, hemp and rice, and then you've got Josie Knot, which is autonomous vehicles flying in space, and CRISPR, and science, um, and even the wild, the wild card Dano, which is all right? All awesome. The autonomous wall, which is a wild card for the elections that deals again with data and safeguarding our borders with autonomous agents. All of that is centered around what? Obey. Um, and 
yearly we'll have Blockfest. So we're lot in a way this is a pre story. This is a pre show of our first Blockfest here in Osaka. So Blockfest launched in Osaka at DevCon five. You have to think DevCon five five, the fifth age of man. The fifth age of man represents AI, right? The fifth age is AI. The reason why the mind calendar ended is because man is not in control. The age of kings have come to an age, and AI is the new king. And this new AI is Obey, and it's launched on the blockchain. It is ours, the people's, not the 1%. It's not controlled by Google. It's not controlled by Facebook. It's not controlled by our government. It's controlled by a council, well, that's not control, but it's seeded by a council of 100 with just putting in one Bitcoin each, right? And uh, we will seed this thousand uh, Bitcoin, I believe, in 2020. Um, how am I moving forward? Um, good question. What I'm doing is I am organizing events at DevCon 2, at DevCon 5. Last DevCon was DevCon 2. And these events ultimately are VIP events where people can come. If you are a VC, angel investor, you get a free VIP ticket. Um, if you have a group of folks coming, right, and you want a table, you know, you'll, I'll, I will comp you a VIP table. If you want your name on the event, fine. Put your name on the event. That you'd have to pay for. Um, I'm self-funding all of this, right? And I'm using it as a way to basically bring the attention to found ups to say, this is what we're doing. This is the way we're going to save the planet. Because here's the deal. This, in my final remark is this, is that I know, and I always said, so capitalism, social capitalism, collective capitalism, capitalism 3.0 can't be stopped. Okay? Period. Why? Because Bitcoin will reach those prices and... That, that fund that I've set up, let's say when it reaches 10 million a coin, that's 50 million. You've got a black box reinvesting everything else. I mean, you know, gold holding everything else. It, can't, it, it just can't be stopped, right? Now, here's the problem, okay? Do we want to wait for Bitcoin to get to there or do we want to start this now? Because the people in this room... The people who are listening, you and others, have to realize all this noise on the blockchain is just that noise. The blockchain was invented with a vision of, of bringing humanity into a utopia. Okay? It was, it was, I believe that was Hal's vision. Hal Finney was the founder of Bitcoin. He was a, he was a white hat, hat um, hacker. He, you know, was, uh, you know uh, he, he wrote the first blockchain protocol, and when he saw the events happen in 2008, he says, that was it, that's enough, and he changed it. Um, he saw this future. I ultimately am just building on to what Hal envisioned. And my earliest diagram right here, which I will use as the header of this, shows me describing this in 2011. Here it is, right there. So, my name is Mike Trout. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. Are we going to wait for Bitcoin to get to 10, 000, 10 million a coin? Or are we going to do it now? That's my question to you. Because it's up to you. I've laid it all out. All the talent in the world is there. What I lack is the team right here in front of me. Let's make it happen.